Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. So, perhaps you've been using Linux for a little while and you fancy getting your feet wet looking at a, an Arch system. But you're a little bit worried that Arch requires a level of technical expertise that you don't feel you're quite at as yet. But you're happy learning and in the meantime what you'd like is a very workable system to help you gain that knowledge. Well, perhaps Arco Linux is for you. That's what we're going to look at today. Okay, welcome back. So uh, I thought I'd move on to do a review of something that I've been meaning to get around to for a few months, in fact. A couple of months ago, I did uh, Arco Linux D, uh, which was a basic ISO, which booted me into a plain system. I then pulled down GitHub scripts from the Arco Linux repo, and I turned it into a, a, a Mate desktop. What I never looked at, though, is the essential core Arco Linux ISO. Because you don't have to go through that GitHub process if you just want to install Arco Linux. In fact, the basic system comes through with three desktops configured. It comes with XFCE, Openbox, and i3. Now, when I first looked at that, I thought, that's a really strange mixture. Until you take a step back and you think, well, hold on, it's not really. The whole thought and philosophy behind Arco Linux is it's about learning Linux as you go. And if I think about what I've recently done, uh, Mate, the desktop environment, was for many years my favourite. But I've recently moved on to window managers and I started with Openbox. And for the last couple of months, I've been tiling with uh, i3 and BSPWM, etc., etc. So in a way, if it's going to be a learning experience, having three different types of environment on an ISO makes sense. Start off with a desktop environment move on to look at a plain window manager open box, which is still floating. And then if you want to get into tiling, well, there's i3. So from that perspective, it makes a lot of sense. And I've played with this uh, ISO a few times over the course of the last couple of months. And I've actually put it on one of my ThinkPads, one of my older ThinkPads, and it's been bulletproof. Now, there are lots of Arch-based systems out there, and some of them are brilliant. Endeavor and Manjaro, to name two of them. But there are many out there. Um, Arch Labs, I can't forget that. The thing is, from a personal point of view, Arco Linux, for me, has the wow factor. It looks absolutely great. And not only does it look absolutely great, but it's a rolling release, a bleeding edge release that almost holds you by the hand. So let's just move over to the Arco Linux web page very briefly before we fire this bad boy up. This is probably the weakest point of Arco Linux as far as I'm concerned because the, the website's all over the place and it's not easy to find information. That's not to say there isn't a wealth of great information on here, but essentially I use a Google search if I need to find something about Arco Linux, and it will generally take me to the right, the right point on this Arco Linux site. Anyway, enough said. I've looked at that in the past. The whole point of Arco Linux, though, as it says here, it's a learning path. Install the core ISO and then move on to look at how you can build up desktops yourself with GitHub scripts, create your own ISOs, etc., etc., and perhaps even install a basic or a plain Arch system. 
All I really want to cover here is the downloads. As far as downloading this ISO with uh, three environments on, choose which you want. Go to any of these links and just download Arco Linux. Not Arco Linux D or Arco Linux P, just Arco Linux. Just for information, Arco Linux P, although it gives you the opportunity to create your own ISO, there are also a number of community editions on here where they've already been created with single desktops. So that's also an option. Anyway, before we do that, before we get into it any further, let's load up the ISO and let's give it a spin. Right, so you should see uh, the XFC desktop in front of you of Arco Linux with the welcome screen. It booted in VirtualBox without a problem and the guest editions are obviously installed already because it booted straight into a HD resolution. This welcome screen gives us the option to run Gparted or Calamaris. And there's a reason for this. Calamaris currently has a little bit of a bug where sometimes automatic uh, installation or automatic partitioning crashes out. And you've all seen that happen to me a number of times. So Arco Linux recommends you run Gparted first, create your partitions, run Calamaris and do a manual setup. So we'll do that. Uh, as it says there, we advise you to clean the computer with Gparted before installing. Clean's a bit of a strange term, but hey-ho. And so we'll just run Gparted, which should launch in a minute, and I shall just maximise that. Now, this is a new disk or a new virtual disk, so the first thing we do is we go to the device menu and we need to create a partition table. This is an EFI system, so I'm going to create a GPT partition and hit apply. I'm then going to go to the icon on the far left and I'm going to create my ESP FAT32 partition to start off with. And I'm going to make that 550 megs. It can stay as a primary partition, but I'm going to set it to FAT32 and click add. Next. Now, I don't normally create a swap partition on uh, virtual machines, ju but just for giggles, let's create a, a four gig partition. I know it'll just be under at 4,000 megs because it's 1,024 megs per gig, etc. But no matter. Um, and I'm going to set that to Linux swap and click add. Last but not least, I'll use the remainder of the space for an EXT4 partition, which I'll use for root. So, that's the three created. I'll now hit the tick box, apply, and Gparted will do its stuff, and it will set up my partitions. Now, currently, Calamaris seems to struggle when it comes to setting flags, and on quite a few occasions, there isn't an option to set an ESP flag. So I'm going to click here in Gparted on the FAT32 partition and click Manage Flags. And I'm actually going to set the ESP flag there and it will automatically set, set boot as well. So that's that. Just setting the boot flag, you don't need to hit the tick. It's all done now. So let me close down Gparted, and we'll now run Calamaris. Now this Calamaris is the latest version, and uh, Arco Linux has done a fair bit to customise it as well, where you get the option to install lots of additional packages. Starts off as normal though, let's set the language to English, and straight away we go to what kernel do you want? Well, if you've got NVIDIA, you can install one of the kernels with NVIDIA. I don't have NVIDIA, so I'm just going to click the long-term support kernel without any NVIDIA. But you get the whole range of options here. The standard kernel, the hardened kernel, the Zen kernel, you choose. If you want to install microcode on Intel and AMD CPUs, it's a good point to do it here. Let's click Next. 
Do I want any of this communication software installed? Well, I've seen a review of the Riot desktop. Let's give that a go. What about development tools? Well, Genie plugins and LeafPad might be quite interesting. Let's click Next. What Office uh, applications do I want? Well, I'm going to install LibreOffice, and I'm, I'm going for the still package, which is like the long-term support version rather than the uh, rolling release, which is the fresh version. I'm going to click Next, and we have a whole range of options here for multimedia. Let's just click Audacity. And Next, what browsers do we want? Well, I'll have the Brave browser, Firefox, Thunderbird, and let's say Transmission. I'd obviously take longer to make these choices if I was installing it on a, a real system. How about themes? Um, I quite like the Arc icon theme. Uh, the Materia GTK theme. The Papyrus icon theme. That'll do, I think. I don't want any games. Do I want any of these utilities? Not at the moment, thank you. What accessories do I want? Well, cheese is always fun with webcams, so we'll do that. And some alternative file managers. Well, PC Man FM is always good. Do I want any additional fonts? The terminal for Terminus font or Git or graphics or anything else? I'm just going to pick terminals and I'm going to install the Alacrity terminal as well. And for now, I'm not going to install VirtualBox. I'm just going to hit Next. I don't need any of the Arch Arco Linux dev tools, so Next. And we go straight to our normal time zone screen, which it's uh, correctly uh, identified. My keyboard is set as UK, so that's great. Now we get to partitioning. So I'm going to hit Manual Partitioning because we've already created the partitions. And we go to Next. So let's highlight that FAT32 partition and click Edit. We don't need to reformat it, because that's already been done within Gparted. But I do want to mount it on Boot EFI. You can see there that the boot flag I've already set in Gparted is there, but I don't have the option to set an ESP partition. So I'm just going to click OK. Swap, well, we can leave that as is. But our root partition, we will need to make sure that we've got the mount point set correctly. We don't need any flags, and we'll click OK. And next, let me just set my normal name. And I will, as usual, use exactly the same password for root. So it's telling me what it's going to do here. Um, it's set up the FAT32 partition with mount point boot EFI and install Arco Linux on the system partition dev SDA3. Yeah, and it's already picked up the swap partition, I can see, so not a problem. Let's hit install. And we'll come back once this is done.
Right, so we're all done. It took a little bit longer than normal, but that's because it was pulling in additional packages. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut this down, and we'll come back once I've booted into the uh, install system. Right, so uh, I've rebooted, and we're at a, a LightDM login screen, which is uh, really nice looking. I can see up on the top right that the default desktop session is XFCE, but we have the options there for i3 and OpenBox. Let's stick with XFCE to start off with, and uh, I'll just log in and see where we get to. And here we go. Our welcome screen uh, loads up again. And I'm really quite impressed. I like, I like the color scheme. I like the way it looks. I really like uh, the icon set. I believe he uses the Sardi icon set, but we'll come to that in a minute. Let's go straight away to this welcome screen. And the first big button on there says update arch mirrors. So let's do that. It seems to have finished updating the arch mirrors. So what else have we got here? Well, release information, choose your project, which just opens up uh, the Arco Linux website. Core info. Let's see what that's all about. Again, it opens up the Arch Arco Linux website with some links to join the group on Discord or on Telegram. Uh, fast track. I'm not sure what fast track is, but let's have a look. These are all website links by the look of it. Oh, right. And that gives you a little bit of information, checking ISO for errors, writing an ISO to USB, BIOS, UEFI, etc., etc. Okay, all good. A link to the forum. I believe the Arco Linux forum is very friendly. It doesn't have the reputation that the standard Arc Linux forum has. So we've got a donate button, a get involved button, a debug button. What's this? Let's just have a quick look. Right. I'm not exactly sure what we would do with that, but okay. And a YouTube button. Now, Eric Dubois produces a huge amount of YouTube videos. Um, we should see them. Firefox is already running, but not responding. Oh, right. Okay. Well, let's try something else then. Okay. So that's working. Let's go to YouTube. Right. It's working now. Obviously, I shut down Firefox and uh, reopened it too quickly. So we have Eric Dubois' uh, YouTube page here. Now, he is someone who publishes videos constantly. You can see, looking at the recent ones, three days ago, four days ago, four days ago, four days, and on it goes. There are hundreds and hundreds of videos on this site with how-tos for various things. I'm always surprised at how few views he actually gets on his videos. I personally uh, have subscribed, uh, and I would suggest you do the same if you're going to run Arco Linux. But okay, so they're, they're your basic buttons, your links to a range of sites, and then down at the bottom, Facebook, Twitter, Me MeWe, Instagram, LinkedIn... And Patreon, Discord, Telegram, run Arco Linux tweak tool, and any conflicts information. Well, let's just have a look at the conflicts information to start off with, which I think is a nice little touch. If you're going to install additional uh, packages, it tells you which packages are likely to conflict with any other packages. So... It's a prior warning. What about the tweak tool? Now, I've never seen this, so uh, I'm really in interested to see what it does. And hopefully, oh, it certainly is. It's launching now. Right, so let me just maximize this. 
so we have an auto start section so we can start conky if we want to a desktop installer select a desktop to install wow <laughs> so pick your desktop bspwm cinnamon gnome i3 jwm whatever you want and hit install this is uh really quite innovative i like that a lot grub config right so what sort of grub screen do you want i've just got that at the moment hb block oh so this is about blocking ads your light dm configuration choose the desktop you want to auto log into okay nothing's coming up there at the moment near fetch config what do we want to show there ob logout config pacman config which repos do we want to enable so we could also enable the test repo and spin-off repo i've no idea who hefter or bobo are but hey ho slimlock not entirely sure what this is but I'm, ass I'm assuming it may well be some sort of plymouth type theme don't know i would need to have a look and then there's a whole range of uh plymouth f uh, themes okay well the auto start is useful and i'm especially impressed at this ability to select a desktop and uh just install it like that as simple as that in fact you know let's just pick one let's say jwm clear the cache before reinstall okay install and off it goes doing its thing jwm has been installed absolutely brilliant i like that a lot what else have we got? Well, we pretty much know what's there. On the favourites, we've got the welcome screen and the tweak tool already. Firefox, our file manager. What is this? Is Yeah, this is Thunar, but we should have PC Man FM installed here anyway because we asked for that to happen, and there it is. Okay, so accessories, pretty much everything you'd expect in an xfc desktop plus the additional packages that i've installed but you've also got your screenshot tool here you've got a copy of plank variety is already installed development we've got uh, genie meld sublime text and atom libreoffice math already installed in education um Right, GIMP is installed by default along with Inkscape Peak. Record short animated GIF images from your screen. Interesting. Ristretto and a document scanner. You've got the standard uh, stuff that I installed Transmission, Thunderbird, Brave, but there's also Chromium and Firefox there. We've got Audacity and Cheese, but GUC View and VLC. All of LibreOffice, obviously, and then all of your settings. Okay, I didn't want to go through the menu in huge detail because it was more about showcasing this and how you actually go about managing this system. Now, the big thing here is I'm going to search for preferred applications to start off with. And there is a, a little dialogue there to set you uh, your preferred applications. So the web browser is currently set to Firefox. The mail reader is Evolution, but I'm going to change that to Thunderbird. And here is the main reason why I think going to preferred applications straight away is a good idea. For some reason, Eric Dubois sets Termite as the default terminal. I think that's a rather strange choice, but nevertheless... I'm going to set XFCE as the main terminal. And once it's set, you can launch it simply by hitting the super button or the Windows key and enter. 
And yes, this is now the XFCE terminal, which is brilliant. Now, I'm just going to maximize this at the moment because one of the big things about Arco Linux is it comes pre-configured with a load of aliases in your Bash RC. So if I just go into my uh, Bash RC now, you can see that there is a stack of pre-existing aliases in here. And I would suggest you go in straight away and have a look at these to see exactly what everything does. <laughs> the list goes ever on and on. To update the system, well, it's an Arch system, but Eric has included a few aliases. So, for instance, to update all of the packages from the standard Arch repos plus the Arco Linux repos, you just have to issue the word update. It prompts for my uh, password, and it tells me there's nothing to do. It would do that because I've just done an update before turning on the recording as well. If we wanted to update all the AUR packages as well, there's another alias, PKSYUA. And it's going through again there's nothing to do now one of the things that is quite unique really to arco linux it's arch linux clearly so it's a rolling release anyway but eric dubois and his team are constantly tweaking the system once you've installed a copy of arco linux it's sort of fixed in time with all the tweaks and the configurations and the bash RC that you got right from the word go. But if you want to keep your, your distribution rolling and constantly pulling down all the latest tweaks and the latest configurations, there is a way to do that. And the way to do that is simply to issue the command skel. This will pull down all of the latest changes in your Skell directory. It will make a copy of your configuration file, your .config file, and uh, it will overwrite everything. So if I now go to uh, the command line and have a look here, you can see that I've, I've actually run Skell twice. It's taken the whole of my .config directory, it's backed it up, and it's created, or it's pasted, a brand new copy of the .config directory. So, if you want to stay completely up to date, run a scale. You don't ever have to run the command scale if you don't want to, but if you're really keen to stay on the absolutely bleeding edge of where Arco Linux is up to, this is what we do. Now I said there are Arco Linux repositories as well as the standard Arch repositories. And you'll see here in the bottom right there is a copy of Pamac. So if I was to select repositories, for instance, You'll see there's core, extra, community, and multi-lib, which are all our standard repositories. But there is also an Arco Linux repo, which are all the themes and various bits and pieces that come direct from Eric Dubois. There's a third-party repo. There's not a huge amount in here. There's additional things that you can install. I see there's a copy of Mate Tweak there already installed, but a few of the basics are already here. And there's a an Arco Linux repo extra large. Right, so this is where the Brave browser and the Vivaldi browser come from, but it goes on and on and on with lots of pre-compiled packages. I've personally found the Arco Linux repos to be quite useful because something like Polybar is in the AUR already, but 
on an Arco Linux system where I was installing it, it just installed it straight away from uh, the repos, uh, the Arco Linux repo. So if I kind of type polybar, yeah, there's a version of it already in the Arco Linux repo, third party. So you don't actually have to compile it direct from the AUR. You have got yay installed by default, though, so you've got access to the AUR anyway. So I'm really impressed with that. It's a lovely, clean desktop. What about uh, the right-click menu? Well, there are on here, right at the bottom, still your standard menu you get with right-click on XFCE, but you have quite a few additional things here. Links to open a terminal, to create sim links, to search with catfish, to compare, to open folders as root, changing the ownership of uh, a folder to root or to the user, and so on and so forth. Um, but you've also got a link here to the desktop settings. What I want to look at is the wallpaper that we've actually got here, because Arco Linux does not use the standard XFCE uh, wallpapers. We have an absolute load of really interesting wallpapers, very colorful. I quite like this sort of look myself, the techie look. Um, and there's quite a few of these here. I like that. I really like that. Not quite sure what it is, but it looks great. So, yeah, you've got lots of options here. But this is just XFCE. Let's briefly log out of this and log into the Openbox system. So if I now select Openbox as our main session and log into this. And it's just loading up. We get our welcome screen again. And here we have Openbox. So we have our standard Openbox, well, I say our standard Openbox menu. It's uh, certainly been customized. It's a little fuller than what you'll get on a default Openbox. He's obviously using OB menu generator here. I'm presuming that this is Plank, but I'll find out in a minute. Yes, it is Plank. Okay, so you've got Plank on the left. You've got Network Manager, yeah, already brought in. So if you prefer to work in a Window Manager and you find that it's just as comfortable for you to work in a Window Manager as in a desktop environment, and you fancy giving Openbox a shot, this isn't bad at all. What about if you want to go over to try a bit of tiling? Well, let's just log out here. Right, you've even, even got a nice uh, logout screen there, or graphic, OB logout, I think that's called. We're back at the light DM screen. Let's now move to i3 and see what he's done with that. Right, okay, so we've already got Conky starting out of the box there, which can be quite useful because uh, you clearly aren't necessarily going to know how you shut things down and uh, how you do things. I mean, I'm looking at this, so it's uh, Super Shift Q. So Super Shift Q, okay, shuts that down. Super Enter, opens the terminal. Super Enter opens the terminal. Super Shift Q. Right, so if you want to give i3 a go, it's a nicely configured i3. It's not gone mad as far as all the icons are concerned. Um, I was hoping it wasn't going to be a mass of colors here, that it was just going to be a nice straightforward i3 screen. And I'm pleased to say that that's exactly what it looks like. 
So if you fancy tiling, you could do worse than using this to play around and to see whether it's something that you'd want to look at further. That's all I want to say about Arco Linux. I, I'll be honest, I'm blown away by this. I think it's such a clever, well-put-together uh, ISO. And, uh, yeah, let's go and chat. Right, so that's Arco Linux. To my mind, when it comes to Arch-based distros, I won't say it's the best, but it's certainly up there with your Endeavors and your Manjaros, in my mind. And the actual look and feel of it, its default configuration, to me, it has more of a wow factor than the other ones that I've just mentioned. It's personal preference, of course. I do like the fact, however, that you can constantly keep it updated with the Skell command and uh, pull down all, all the latest uh, tweaks and configurations that Eric and his team have done. Um, I'm also particularly impressed with that little tweak tool that lets you install a desktop with click of a button. <laughs> That's got to be something special. So it's worth giving it a go. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for new starters, but I think once you've got your feet wet and you're thinking of moving to have a look at Arch, it's a good choice. You won't go far wrong. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, back to the normal length I, uh, video, you see. Not a quickie like I did last time. Don't forget to join me on Library. Also, uh, the Old Tech Bloke Facebook channel, or group, should I say, seems to be working. I'm getting lots of people coming in and saying, can I join? So I'm not quite sure why some people have had problems. But anyway, that's it for today, and uh, I'll see you on Saturday. Thank you.